Hey guys, well, we got a carburetor in front of us, so you know what that means? It's time for another carburetor related video. Well, I'm always trying to do videos that concern some kind of topic that I've not seen on YouTube so far, and I had an idea for this video, and, and I did some searching, and I didn't really see anything that explained this very well, so uh, the topic of today's video is going to be the difference between manifold and ported vacuum. Now, for a long time, myself, I myself was confused about this, and a lot of people are confused about it. And so I wanted to take the time to explain this so we know what we're talking about when we talk about ported vacuum or manifold vacuum. Now, you know, of course, manifold vacuum is um, it's because of anything, any engine that has a throttle, has throttle valves on it. Uh, creates a vacuum signal in the intake as the engine runs and you'll notice if you ever have an engine that has a vacuum gauge attached to it you'll notice that you usually have higher vacuum at idle and then when you increase the throttle the vacuum tends to go down you know all the way to zero and that's just kind of a it's kind of a an effect of restriction in the engine you know as far as it being throttled uh, if you have a diesel engine that has no throttle on it because they don't use throttles, but if you have a diesel engine you don't have manifold vacuum because there's no throttle. So that's how you get manifold vacuum. So we all know that we've got manifold vacuum. And you've also heard about ported vacuum. Well, ported vacuum is not some other mysterious source of vacuum. It's just simply manifold vacuum. It's just it's a difference in when the vacuum signal comes on. Now, as we go through this video, I'm going to be using terms hopefully we can all kind of understand. It's about on, off, comes on, goes off, stuff like that, because that's the way you look at it. And a, a vacuum signal, when it's used to operate some external device other than just internal to the carburetor, then you have to look at it like it's turning something on or turning something off. It's activating something. It's just the use of vacuum to activate something. You have vacuum booster for your brakes, you have uh, some type of, you have a distributor of advance mechanism, vacuum advance mechanism, you may have a EGR valve, you may have a, some older cars have a delayed spark valve, uh, which is exactly what it says it is. Like on this carburetor, we're using this carburetor, this is a Carter carburetor, we're using this because this is a very simple carburetor and it's easy to, for me to show you and explain. Um, what's going on. Of course you also always have a, a, a PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation valve on any modern car like from the late 60s on up. So uh, you got those things going on and, and so you always have to have vacuum to operate them. The difference is where you get into this about ported versus manifold vacuum and we're using you know like I said earlier just a while ago ported vacuum is just a it, it's it's all one vacuum source it's just when it comes on so we're kind of to, to kind of clarify it but we'll say the difference between manifold and delayed ported vacuum because it's the same thing okay well manifold vacuum is vacuum is a vacuum signal that is present anytime the engine is running and it's capable of generating a vacuum signal I could idle you yeah, might have 14 15 inches of vacuum so that's when you always have a strong manifold vacuum signal. And what you use that for, you use a manifold vacuum signal for anything that needs to operate, um, you know, at idle, at idle speeds, operate well at idle speeds, like a, in effect a brake booster, because you always want a strong vacuum signal at idle for your brake booster so your power brakes will work. Uh, things like, um, you know climate control uh, you know you may use vacuum operated climate control in, in a lot of vehicles uh, you may have like vacuum wipers on a really old vehicle uh, you may have uh, you know PCV you want that on all the time you, hear, you see what I'm saying I'm say you want that on all the time so you want vacuum operating it all the time so that's why you use manifold vacuum that's what a manifold vacuum is ideal for now here's where it gets kind of kind of blurry about this is about ported vacuum. Now you'll notice that I did not mention distributor vents in this 
uh, list of things that you want on all the time. There are some things on an engine, especially a carbureted engine, that you don't want to come on at idle because it affects its running. Uh, the engine, the manufacturer just specified they didn't want it working at idle. And one of those is always usually like distributor advance because you don't want distributor advance on at idle. You don't want the distributor advancing. So you don't want to, you don't want to uh, hook it to a, a, a manifold vacuum source so that that diaphragm, you know, in the in the uh, distributor is trying to work. Now, let me clarify that. There are some manufacturers who did specify that they wanted distributor advance hooked to manifold vacuum. If it says that, if that's what it says in the original factory specs, or the diagram tells you that under the hood, then that's what you do. You know, follow their instructions. But generally, as a rule, you don't usually run distributor advance at idle. I mean, there's no real need to because you can usually advance a distributor far enough with base timing, you know, uh, you don't need to do that. So now some do, so not trying to confuse you, but that's that's generally the rule. Another thing that you usually do not want to run at idle, so you want to use ported vacuum for that is like EGR valve, that's a, a exhaust gas recirculation valve. So you always want that to run off of ported vacuum because ported vacuum, here's the deal with ported vacuum. How does ported vacuum work? Why do you want these things to run not at idle. How do you make them not work at idle? Well, I know on this Carter carburetor that this is a ported vacuum source right here. This is the ported vacuum nipple. Um, this is what runs the distributor and the EGR valve and some of them have a delayed spark uh, orifice uh, OSAC valve. It's things that, you know, this is a source for, for vacuum for a vacuum cylinder that you don't want coming on at idle as well. Okay, how do you do that? How do you how do you create a vacuum signal that's not operating at idle? Well, let's take a look here at the bottom uh, of this carburetor and we're going to learn some things here very quickly. Now you're, this is the bottom of the carburetor. These are the butterfly valves, throttle valves. This is where it mounts to the intake, like this. Now, you'll notice this carburetor has a port here. This is for the uh, PCV valve on this particular engine that goes on. It's got one back here. This is a this is a port for the choke diaphragm. This is also a uh, manifold vacuum port. There's a port here. This runs the air cleaner uh, temperature thermostat inside the air cleaner. This one, this is a kind of a smog thing. This is just kind of a this is normally hooked to a uh, manifold vacuum. Uh, to a switch. It's got a vacuum switch down the line of it that turns. This is kind of a, uh, well, when the engine gets hot, it kind of, and tries to run too rich at idle, it kind of, the bleed valve is what it is. And then down here, um, we have another, this is a port for um, the EGR, and this is a port for the uh, this trips the charcoal canister. This is the purge valve port. Now, I know that is confusing. I know you think, well, I'm not gonna know all that. I don't know how to look at it. Well, let me show you how to look. This is a kind of a redneck way to tell what you got here. You look at these ports here. Okay, you got that one, and then you take a look in here. You see that? You see where it's at. All pay pay close attention, guys. What I'm going to tell you here: manifold vacuum always draws off of the space below the throttle blades, which means down here. That means it's pulling right out of the manifold. You see, some and some engines have vacuum ports actually on the intake manifold. That's the same thing. Doesn't matter if it's right here below these throttle blades and the intake manifold that's that's manifold vacuum it's all manifold vacuum so same deal uh, so this one here this is let's see the port for it is right here in the center so that's exposed directly to manifold vacuum it works at idle uh, this one here also it comes right in here now 
this is where I got to explain something to you that's going you need to pay close attention to this and this will explain how ported vacuum operates how do you get ported vacuum now this is our ported vacuum port up here to, it's uh, it's only it's only one of two on this carburetor this one and this porridge part now we the reason why the porridge port for the charcoal canister does not work at idle is because you don't want it working at idle it has to has to come off uh, as the engine increases rpms so here we go here's the big deal on this ported vacuum ports any ported vacuum port it's ported and it, you have to put the port above the throttle blades at closed idle position this is at closed closed throttle it's at idle this carburetor all the way closed over here so let's take a look here look right down in here let me put this here a little bit let's see if I can excuse my Rube Goldberg uh, camera skills here I'm trying to do this one minute if possible may not be able to let's take a look here here's how we get ported vacuum look right here at these throttle blades and you'll see that when you turn the carburetor the right way so I can show you what I want to show you <laughs> excuse that you look right down in here I'm gonna take my little handy dandy pointer see the edge of this throttle blade right here see there see how there's a, where it's at now don't pay attention to that one that's a transition port right there so we're not worried about that but look here when I open this thing up you see that you see that port right there that just done got uncovered you see it's covered up when I idle it's at idle okay see how it uncovers it that's connected to one of these ported this uh, port over here for the um, for the distributor and things like that that I just explained to you look over here there's another one in here let's see it is right there you see that little square part right there not that long when you see that right one right there in the center of the screen you see how it got uncovered you see it's covered now when it's covered like that there's no vacuum present so whatever's connected to that port is not going to work it has to the throttle has to crack open start cracking open and there it's uncovered now what happens when it's uncovered it's exposed to, to the vacuum source so that's how you get ported vacuum guys that's the difference in it so uh it's kind of not like i said it's not not that easy to explain this how this works but that's that's how that works so you, you know you may be asking yourself well okay we know what manifold vacuum is we know how we know what ported vacuum is so how do I tell which of these ports are which? Well, that's real easy. You take what I do is it's kind of gross, but I just lean over and I take my mouth and I pick one and I blow in it and I start running my fingers around in here and trying to figure out where the air comes out at. Or you can take if you don't want to put your mouth on that, you can take some carb cleaner and spray in there in this little tube and it'll spray out in here and you just look and see where it comes out at if it's down below here you know or in here or right here or someplace like that squirting out or blowing out then you know this port whichever port it is on whichever carburetor that's a manifold vacuum port so that's how you tell which is which so you don't have to particularly know that ahead of time but uh, that's how you tell like I can blow on this one and I can put my fingers over there's one here and I think there's one one on this side you blow in this and I can open this throttle up and close it off with my finger and I said yep I said that ports up above the throttle blade so I know that's a ported vacuum signal so that's an easy way to figure that out you don't have to automatically know which is which is which is which so let me touch on briefly without trying to confuse you any but let me touch on briefly um, some things that they did on older cars and trucks and things like that with all these vac you've seen these engines these older v8s that have mazes of vacuum lines or they used to a lot of times now everybody's ripped them off because in my experience that's the one thing people cannot understand how to deal with is vacuum signal vacuum lines vacuum signals 
whole nine yards they just it just they can't do it even if there's a diagram right there in front of them they can't do that and I'm not jumping on people for that that's fine I understand not everybody's good at that but if you look at this if you try to uncomplicate it and simplify it more as much as you can then it's easier to understand vacuum you have to look at it two different ways is it something that runs off manifold vacuum at all times at idle or is it something that's ported vacuum that's that's basically it you know when do you want that thing that that vacuum runs when you want it to run do you want it to run off idle you need ported vacuum if you want it to run at idle you need manifold vacuum you find the port on the carburetor that's below the throttle blade if you want manifold if you find the port in the carburetor that's that's up above the throttle blades that's ported that's exactly as easy as you can possibly make it and some engines like I said you ever seen these V8 engines and they'll have these little things in the, like the thermostat neck and they'll have like two or three ports on them and there's never any vacuum lines on them anymore because nobody knows what to do well that is called a temperature control vacuum switch basically it means like if you have two ports one in one out that means you got a signal a, a vacuum signal connected to one side of it and then you have a line leading out of it basically what that means is that temperature TVS that temperature vacuum switch controls at what temperature this uh, mechanism gets a vacuum signal so it will cut the vacuum off to it it's in line it means the one side's connected to the carburetor one side's connected to the EGR valve or the the uka doocha doocha valve or the the muffler control valve or whatever you know one of these small valves over here that nobody knows what they ever do but that's that's how that works that thing's put in line there because the manufacturer doesn't want it turning on right away it wants it to wait until the engine's 170 degrees something like that so theoretically if that switch is still working somebody hadn't busted it then it will permit vacuum to flow at 170 degrees and some engines have one some will have two or three you know like i said you <laughs> Some of this stuff is bullet bars. Nobody knows what it is, and they don't want to figure it out. And that's fine. I'm not trying to tell anybody that they need to run this stuff on their engine. But if you got an engine that's running at least a distributor vacuum and a maybe an EGR valve or you know a thermostatic air cleaner valve that a lot of engines have now, charcoal canister. Uh, so. That, that's how that works so that's that'll exp hopefully this will explain it please ask questions I know you guys would like to know some more details and uh, about stuff so feel free to ask questions and please don't make any comments about how, how long the video is and how much I talked and all that it, it's I ignore those and you're not it's it's pointless to even say that so don't please don't so all right guys I'm gonna cut this off before it gets to 20 seconds 20 seconds, right? 20 minutes. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. See ya.